I know in Koreans, I know that prayer is very, very important for you. I personally had a few friends from South Korea while I was studying in the U.S., and I was impressed with the commitment of prayer that they had. I would like to share a few things about our current situation in Ukraine. You know that we're going through the war, but today I would like to bring you another aspect of war, a spiritual aspect, the one that you're not going to see on news. All the atrocities that are happening in Ukraine, you've seen it through news channels and everything what Russia is doing here is heartbreaking. But there is another side to it. And I truly believe that this is not just a war between two countries. It's actually a spiritual war. The one that is taking place in our hearts. From one side, I see evil. And you see evil. Evil that brings destruction. Evil that brings death. But on the other side, that great evil united the whole world, Europe, and other nations. You, as Koreans, became our close brothers and sisters because you sharing with us the pain of that evil. And when I look at that, we as a church, we as the followers of Jesus, our heart is broken, but at the same time, we see that as a great opportunity to serve people because for this moment, for this day, God created us. Our main commandment is to love God and to love our neighbors. This is the time when we have endless opportunities to love our neighbors. This is the time when we have endless opportunities to open our hearts, open our homes to accept them. I would like to bring you a word from a scripture, something that really encourages me and something that challenges me at the same time. In the midst of all these things that we are living through, in the midst of war, the thing that is being questioned all the time in my life and in the life of my brothers and sisters here in Ukraine is their faith, is our faith. We're constantly trying to see what God is doing and we're constantly trying to survive every new day. And as I looked into scripture, I was reminded of the story from the life of Jesus, when he spent some time at the mountain of transfiguration and walking down to, their, to his disciples, he saw a man who brought his child, and disciples were not able to heal him. And Jesus was talking to that man, and men asked him to heal his child, who was tormented by evil spirits. And Jesus said these words, and you can read it in Mark 9, verse 23, 24. But Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. These last words, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Those those words describe our reality in Ukraine right now better than anything else. We believe that God is capable. We believe that God is strong. We believe that God is using us to bring his kingdom. But at the same time, when you listen to the news, when you see what is happening, our faith sometimes even shatters into pieces. So the first thing that I would like you to point out, that our reality defines our faith. Not our words, but our reality. The way we live defines our faith. In Ukraine, when the war started, a lot of people, those even Christians, they disappeared. They were running for their life. And that's okay. That's what we do. But there were other people. And I want to tell you a story about a pastor from Mariupol, Gennady Kadatsky. He was a pastor of one church in Mariupol. And you heard about Mariupol and you saw pictures of Mariupol. So he took as a personal calling for him 
to visit every single member of his church. First, he had a car, and so he'd drive from one home to another home to support them, to bring some food, to bring comfort. Then he lost his car because of bombing. He found a bicycle. So he was taking his bicycle and taking the same comfort to each family. Then where the homes of those families were destroyed, all of them moved into one place. All of them were searching for safety. They had no food, no electricity, limited amount of water. But you know what they were doing at night? With the candle, they were singing psalms, reading Bible, and that was the way that he was comforting them. A few days ago, Gennady left Mariupol with his wife, but he left as the last person of his church. Every member of his church, he made sure that all of them left and they're in safety. And only after that, he left Mariupol. That's what I'm saying about reality defines your faith. We as preachers, as believers, we can talk a lot about faith. But in Ukraine right now, we have time when that faith is really revealed through what we're doing. So when we're saying that faith is important for us, it's actually revealed in our actions. In World War II, in the life of evangelical Christians in Germany, that was the same thing. They were putting their life in danger, danger saving other people. In us, for us in Ukraine right now, our faith is to help those people that really need our help. For you in Korea, it's probably something different. But one thing that is the same for all of us, every single moment of our life defines our faith through actions, not through the words. The second thing about faith that I would like to share from this story when you look at the father, he was in the battle. On one side, he wanted his son to be healed and healthy. On the other side, he realized how weak his faith was. And so he cried out to Jesus, help my unbelief. When you look at our faith, the thing that we all realized clearly in Ukraine, that you cannot store faith in past for future. You need faith for every single day. You need faith for every single challenge. You cannot do something in past that will help you or give you some additional help in going through a challenge of today. And what it reminds me, you know, when we pray in Lord's Prayer, we're asking Him bread for today. When Israel was in, in the desert, they were given manna, and manna was given for one day. They couldn't store that manna for seven days or for even tomorrow. They had to trust the Lord that tomorrow they will get it again. So when I look in our case, in our life, every day is a challenge. And when we complete a day, with strong faith, with everything what we could possibly do, we give praise to the Lord. But tomorrow, we have to rise up again with faith and go through that day. There's one story that illustrates that the most. That story about a lady with five children. She came from the city of Donetsk. She flew from Donetsk uh, to Kiev in 2014 because that was the first time when the war came to Ukraine. Out of her five children, she was running for her life to Kiev. Out of her five children, two of them are severely handicapped. They have cerebral palsy. And a few days ago, she came from Kiev running for her life to us to Lviv because Kiev was bombed. And so when I was listening to her story, I realized that that lady is not fleeing only once. It seems like all her life is fleeing for 
life of her children. And she does not have a husband because she lost him in the first war. And so looking at her, listening to her story, I was amazed how much strength that woman has. To leave her hometown first time, to leave her city of Kiev, the, the safe city, second time. And she is pushing through all of this, trying to provide safety to her children. We've been able to help her and transition her into Germany. And so she is there with all help that she needs. And the thing that amazed me the most, that she had enough strength to do what she was supposed to do in every moment of her life. And it reminds me, if we go through the challenges of our life, if we go going through the challenges of our faith, we have to remember that our responsibility is to live through today with the hope and the prayer that God will help us tomorrow. And there is a, one, one very important thing here about faith for every day. When we say that faith, that every day requires faith, what I'm trying to say is that faith gives hope and trust that God is knowing what he is doing for every day. Faith is opposite to despair. The story about this lady that I shared shows that she is a mom. She was looking for safety for her, people, for her children. She was not just sitting and waiting for, for her children to die. And see, the thing that is really important for us Christians, when we think about faith, our number one responsibility is not to be victims of despair, but actually to believe that God knows what he's doing and confess that and proclaim that and declare that through our life to other people because they are looking for hope. And the last thing about faith that I would like to share with you. In our faith, if we believe God, when that man came to Jesus asking for health for his son, he believed that Jesus can do that. So what is really important for us to remember, if we say yes to God, we say no to evil. If we choose God's side, we are opposite, or we declare the other side as enemy. Saying yes to God is saying no to enemy. When that man came to Jesus, he said, I trust and I believe you. When we as believers are followers of Jesus, our yes to God means no to evil in whatever form and shape. So what it means for us in Ukraine and what it means for you in Korea is probably two different things. But the principle is the same. If you are a follower of Jesus and you said yes to Jesus, it's your and my accountability to say no to evil. And until the last moment, we have to fight that evil. And we have to help those people who are who are in need of our help. If you remember, God is specially taking care for widows and orphans. And we as the church, this is the call that we have to take care of those that cannot take care of themselves. There is a story that I personally heard about church and about believers. Some of the people that came from Mariupol, they shared with us and you have to understand that people that come to us, they're not necessarily followers of Jesus. Some of them are atheists. But one family shared that story with us. From the time they left Mariupol, in every single spot in their travel, and took them days to get to Lviv, they saw how church was real in what church was proclaiming. They said on, their, on the first checkpoint, Russian soldiers told them that you cannot go further, but there is a church nearby and you can go and they will give you food to eat and place to sleep. And they did that. And next stage of their life, some other believers provided them with transportation. In our place, when they came to us, we found them and arranged them everything what they need to move with their journey 
further into Europe. And the beauty of that story is that we as believers, if we declare that we are children of God, we say no to evil, but we do something that blesses people, that we, we do something that helps them in their need. And there is unconditional love that God revealed to us and gave us an opportunity to reveal the same love to people. And all these stories about churches and followers of Jesus are demonstrating that our yes to God is actually revealed in specific actions. And concluding all this, I would like to give you an overall picture of what is happening in our part of the world. I am sure that you never heard of Europe as being very open and receptive to the gospel. But the thing that is happening right now, God opened hearts of European and other nationalities all around the globe to the gospel because they opened their homes, their lives, their hearts to people in need. And guess what? Those people in need, they telling them how great God is because he brought them into safety and he delivered them from evil. So the thing that I would like you to pray about and think about, right now we're living, we're living in a very different situation, unbelievable situation. When all those people who were close to the gospel, they are open to hear the story of those who were delivered from death. And we need to pray for all believers who are now displaced to become preachers of God's message of salvation and love. That's the main point that I would like you to believe and pray for. If we believe that God can do that, a lot of people will be saved. Thank you.